Three words that may be relevant to Julian Edelman five years from now, Hall of Fame. And this question first came up after Super Bowl 53 when he was named the MVP, frankly, kind of by default because the Patriots only scored 13 points. You can't give it to Tom Brady. One of the reasons why so few receivers are MVPs of the Super Bowl is because it usually goes to the guy who threw the passes, not the guy who catches the passes, unless there's some dominant statistical performance. But I was sitting next to Shereen Williams, who had one of the votes. There were maybe 15 votes for the Super Bowl MVP. She was like, I don't know, I don't know who to vote for in this game. There was no, there was yeah. no dominant offensive performance. Edelman had a solid game. Edelman deserved it for that game. But then all of a sudden, we start talking about, not we, but people start talking about Edelman as a Hall of Famer. Hey, great postseason achievements by Julian Edelman, second only to Jerry Rice when it comes to catches and also, I believe, yards in the postseason. But in the regular season, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I, His numbers aren't good enough. I mean... His numbers are not good enough it, it, to get to the Hall of Fame. It's a silly question. Like, it really is. I, I don't know what... I, I, like, I'm sorry. But that, that, that part of it, like, I, Julian Edelman, awesome football player legend a part of some of the biggest moments in the history of the league definitely i mean rose to the occasion in huge moments whether it's that falcons play that we watched there before when the ball was juggling around catching that that play to the to win the game basically against the seahawks here's the Fal you know the falcons play how about the the third and long down the middle where he basically gets concussed against the Seattle Seahawks and spins off a big hit somehow. And should have been taken out of the Probably game and should've. wasn't. But kept going, and, th and that's just the player he is. Like, hey, all of that is awesome. Hall of Fame, stop it. Like, what, what, where, where did that even come from? Yeah, I mean, Patriots fans, I know he's a legend, but it does just because he's a legend for you guys does not mean Hall of Fame. No. I mean, stop. There were it. some in the media that got there were some in the media that got caught up in it. Yeah. Without doing the research, six hundred and twenty. Catches, 6,822 yards. Heinz Ward has 1,000 catches and over 12,000 yards, and he's had a hard time migrating his way up through the funnel backlog. to get in. And he's and he's a Super Bowl MVP, too. Right. He's a Super Bowl MVP, too. The farthest he's gotten is semifinalist. He hasn't even gotten to the final 15. So unless and until there is a bust in the Hall of Fame that looks just like Heinz Ward, we can't even have the conversation about Julian Edelman because in many respects, I can't even say they're the same guy because Ward had a much more prolific, almost twice the yards career in the regular season than Julian Edelman. And and I don't want to hear the excuse as well. He was stuck behind Wes Welker. Well, hey, that's Start one of the top, chapters in top. the Hall of Famer's yeah, career. Right. If you're good enough, get your ass on the field instead of Wes Welker. You weren't good enough to beat out Wes Welker. That's part of the chapter in well, your I Hall mean, of Fame book. Right. Yeah, his stat. I mean, Wes Welker would be the first guy you'd go, well, he's got to get in the Hall of Fame first, and then we'll talk about Julian Edelman. And then, of course, we, we don't think that's going to happen. Hey, to put it in perspective, it's 156 all time with receiving stats, receiving yards. It's behind Odell Beckham Jr. in, in career yards. Odell Beckham Jr. hasn't played football in three years. He's still beating Julian Edelman. Jarvis Landry is almost 1,000 yards. You know, it's, 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 it's insanity talk. It was total New England fan gushing, and I understand it because he's been a part of so many big moments. But come on, Hall of Fame, that, that's definitely not, not happening. I mean, now, Patriots, Ring of Honor, you know, legend, whatever you want to say, not a Hall of Famer. Here, here, here's the reality, though. We have to think back to the 70s. And when the Steelers won four Super Bowls that decade, yeah. it unlocked the keys to Canton for a lot of guys, including Lynn Swan, who, based upon his regular season stats, had no business getting into Canton. And I know the standards were different then. He still had ridiculously low numbers of catches and yards in the regular season. But what did he give us? He gave us Super Bowl X. Still to this day, one of the great single game performances in NFL history with catches that we never had seen before, whether it's the, the catch where he's falling down, which is an iconic moment in NFL history, the underrated sideline acrobatic act where he somehow is levitating out of bounds and gets his feet back in. Uh, and, and I think that in some respects, and I've never heard this, I was 10 years old at the time this all went down, but I think when the powers that be saw 
what Lynn Swan did in that game, that may have planted the seeds to, you know, find a way to tweak the rules to get more passing into the game. It's a hell of a lot more fun to watch that than it is to watch a guy run the football between the guard and the tackle. So Swan got in, but I just don't think it's enough. With all the proliferation of passing statistics and receivers who are worthy, I don't think Edelman gets in. And you throw on the PED asterisk, and I think that, that that's enough to keep him out. Well, I, I, I'd, be, I'd be stunned if he gets in. Well, definitely. I mean, I, I would be stunned too. And, I mean, you, you know, you could say what you want. Like, you know, yeah, it, it, it's, it's impossible to even compare that era to right now. It, it, it's, it's, it's not it, – it's a backlog of receivers. I mean, we just mentioned we got receivers. Jarvis Landry, is, he's in the middle of his career. He's got 7,000 yards receiving. It, it's, it blows Julian Edelman out of the water. He's still got years and years left on his career that way. You know, Lynn Swan, say what you want. Yeah, the stats weren't the same. They weren't the same for the quarterbacks either. Nothing was the same. Terry Bradshaw was, what, right north of 30,000 passing yards? He might have been less than that. You know, it's Hall of Famer. It's just not even uh, – it's a different world altogether. It's the effect on the game. You know, Julian Edelman was really good. You knew you had to know where he is at all times, but it wasn't like you were like, oh, it's because Julian Edelman's going to beat our best corner man-to-man, -man, you know, all game long and do that. No, it was more like, hey, we got to stop Julian Edelman because, yeah, he's good at what he does, but, man, the niche in which the Patriots have created for him, he's a huge part of their offense. It was more offense-related. It was about like, hey, we got to stop this guy who has this role for the Patriots, whether it's Amendola, Chris Hogan, or, or, or uh, Wes Welker. All thrived in that position there because it's geniusly uh, concocted with their play calling and their play, and their play design through Belichick and McDaniels. So he was a benefactor factor of that. Lynn Swan was a guy at least where you were like, well, I, the, I don't know. We just we got to cover him. We got to watch out. He can run by all our guys, and he can jump over all our guys, and he can catch a slant and run by all our guys. And we're gonna have to do something about him because they don't do anything offensively. They just tell him to run straight or run straight and make a left or run straight and make a right. That's all he does. And we just have to stop him because he's a great talent. To me, there's great difference in that. You know, Amendola. I mean, uh, Edelman really good, but more. A lot of the success is because of the offense and the situation he was put in and the role that was created there in New England and invented by them that he really took advantage of and, and ran with and killed it with. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.